On this edition of Food for Life, from the Catholic Charismatic Center in Houston, Texas, Father Francis Frankovich. He wants us to persevere in believing in Him. And maybe even if we feel humiliated. So last night, um, this morning as I was praying with this, I said, Lord, you've been putting me through this. <laughs> you've been doing this in me. You're trying to see if I'm going to have faith that you're going to give me a word. Today's teaching is based on Matthew 15, 21 to 28. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from the vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word, so his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away for she keeps crying out after us. Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted, and her daughter was healed at that moment. Last night I was uh, kind of coming to a conclusion of the preparation time for this homily, and uh, my heart was completely empty. I said, Lord, I began the week reading the word. I want to know what you want to say to your people. Uh, what do you want to say to me first? I always ask him that. And then, is there something for God's people too? Well, the only thing I could get at the beginning of the week was the word Lord, because she says three times in the gospel, Lord, to Jesus. And it's a title that's especially used for God. In Spanish, we have Señor, and that can be Mr. or Lord. <laughs> but in English, we have two words, Mr. and Lord. And Lord is a very special title given to someone who's the top. <laughs> it says, every knee shall bend and every tongue shall proclaim Jesus Christ is Lord. And she's calling him Lord. And I said, Lord, is that what you want me to talk about? What am I going to say? <laughs> and nothing seemed to strike me very deeply. <laughs> so then I went on and I says, okay, Lord, you must have another plan. What is it? <laughs> And as I was listening, I saw some qualities in this woman. Tremendous faith that she had. The tremendous uh, perseverance, you know, she kept going even though there was obstacles. And being humiliated. Being humbled. I says, okay, Lord, now what am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> and nothing seemed to really make much sense. So I said, okay, Lord, you must have another plan. Um, so I just kept praying and... Uh, wondering, well, what is it you want to do? And then I realized the first reading and the gospel are talking about God is going to be for all peoples. His house is going to be a house of prayer for all nations. He says, I want everybody in on this. And here's a lady who's not a Jew, and he does this miracle for her. I says, okay, now what am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> And nothing was making any, giving me anything that would be kind of stirring inside of me. Then last night I had an experience. I was leaving my office and I was saying, Lord, please give me some kind of a sense of what is the word. A young man came up to me in the parking lot and I was sort of in a hurry because I had made a commitment and I was late as normal. But anyway, as I was going, he says, Father, Father, you've got to help me. <laughs> I says, I'm late, I'll see you later. <laughs> he says, no, Father, please. I says, okay, what's up? <laughs> and he said, I have a spirit inside of me, voodoo. <laughs> I says, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> I says, now what am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> and then he said, uh, Father, please help me. And I says, okay. Um, I says, do you go to Mass on Sunday? I asked him if he was a Catholic. He said yes. I said, do you go to Mass on Sunday? Well, Father, I go on Thursdays to the healing Mass. I says, well, that's a good start. 
And I says, maybe you might consider going on Sunday too. And he said, uh, okay. And then I said, uh, by the way, um, have you been to confession lately? Um, oh, that's been a long time. <laughs> I says, oh dear, I don't have time for a confession right now. <laughs> I says, I wonder what the problem is inside of you. Hmm? So anyway, um, I was kind of frustrated because I knew I had to get going, but yet I knew he needed some help. And I says, Lord, where do I go now? <laughs> so I just stopped for a minute and I just prayed over him. I don't even know what I said. <laughs> Whatever the Lord inspired at that moment. And then when I finished, I blessed him. And I made a sign of the cross over his stomach because he said, well, Father, I'm schizophrenic and I'm on medication. And I said, oh, I said, maybe those are just side effects of your medication. I said, some of those side effects can be something like that. And so anyway, I blessed him, prayed with him anyway. And then I says, how are you doing? He says, I feel fine. He says, it's all gone. <laughs> I says, well, make sure you go to confession. Don't forget to come to Mass. I said, the Lord's doing something in you, but he wants to continue something. Are you here? No. <laughs> I don't know if he came today. <laughs> I didn't see him, so that's why I'm saying this. <laughs> um, so then this morning I was in prayer, and I said, Lord, I'm still waiting. <laughs> and he said, how many times do I have to tell you? I've already spoken the word to you. He says, even last night, didn't you see the Canaanite woman right there in that young man? And what was your first response? He says, didn't you just wait and you didn't want to do anything? <laughs> and then you saw that he had faith and he kept up and he wasn't going to let you go until you blessed him. <laughs> right? Yes. And didn't you say, well, you need to be going to confession, going to Mass? I said, well, yeah. Um, that sort of came up in my heart that I should ask him. And he, she said, he said, well, didn't I say something to that Canaanite woman? You know, we don't throw the bread of the food of the children to the dogs. The pet dog, by the way, the word means pet dog, the house dog. You know, it's not a diminutive, it's not something to put a person down, but he was just saying, you know, our little favorite pet dog here, we don't throw him our food, we give it to the children. And he says, but at least give me this. <laughs> and all that he was saying was, could you just give me a blessing? So I realized the Lord was already telling me what he wanted to say. He says, look, do you see the faith of that woman? I want you to notice things because I'm a God who's always working. Last week, Father Mark made a comment. He says, you know, God is infinite. And he says, we're finite, right? And he says, infinite means like there's no bounds to him and we're very bound, <laughs> you know, we're very limited. Huh? It's sort of like he's transcendent, he's above everything and yet he's so close, he's imminent, he's so close we don't even recognize him and yet he's so far above us we can't grasp him. And one of the things Father Mark said that I thought was really important, he said, don't forget, though, even though we don't fully understand our God, we know this. He always loves us. And he will always do good for us. Remember the example I gave about uh, this person who was in a class where the professor said to the students, he said, well, students, you know, he was an atheist and he wanted to show them that he was a good atheist. And he says, did God, I mean, does evil exist? And of course, what did he say? Yes, it exists. And he says, then did God make everything? Yes, God made everything. Well, then the conclusion is he made evil, right? And he said, there's something wrong with your conclusion. <laughs> I don't think so. That's not it. But he didn't know how to answer him. He says, if God made evil, then he must be evil himself. You can't make something that you're not. He says, well, you're a very logical professor, but I don't know, that's not right. So then another student stood up, right? Remember what happened? He said, Professor, I have a question for you. Does cold exist? And what did he say? He said, of course cold exists. You know it. When you feel cold, you know it's cold. 
And he says, Professor, coal does not exist. He says, really? He says, yeah, coal does not exist. The only thing that exists is heat, and that's the only thing we can measure is heat. And when there's less heat, we use a term, and it's called cold. But you can't measure cold. You can only measure heat. And there's a lack of heat that's cold. So he says, does evil exist? And he says, of course evil exists. You see it everywhere. He says, well, maybe it exists, but not Evil is a term we use for something else. It's a lack of something. What is it? It's a lack of God. And it's just a term we use. It doesn't exist as itself. It only exists as a lack of God, a lack of good. And of course, everybody in the class applauded him <laughs> because he was showing God is good. And he can only do good. Now we, because we have the ability to choose, can choose not to do good. And we call that evil. He can't choose to do good. He can only do good. He can't choose to do evil. We remember in the letter of Paul to the Romans, in the 8th chapter, where he said those words, right? He said... All things work together for good. All things work together for good for who? For those who are called according to his purpose. Those who love him and are called to him. He says he'll always work good, even out of evil. So with that as a background, I remember the words of Mary when she, in the Gospel of Luke, said these words. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. He's the one who rescues me. For he has looked upon his handmaid's lowliness and behold, now will all ages call me blessed. He said, he humbled me. I am nothing. I see my nothingness. But he's so great, he's going to do something with my nothingness. And so I was seeing in all this that this gospel, what he's doing with this woman, is he was teaching her that God works in everything and he's working for good. But sometimes we're going to have to go through trials. He was trying to form within her faith, a deep, profound faith. So he didn't say anything. And she stayed with her faith. I am not going to waver in my trust in this God. In the Gospel of Matthew, in the 21st chapter, we hear these words. In verse 21 and 22, Jesus said to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, if you have faith and do not waver. If you have faith and do not, what? Waver. waver. Amen. <laughs> have mercy on us. He says, not only will you do what has been done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, it will be done. Whatever you ask for in faith, you won't receive. You will receive, he said. <laughs> he said, you will receive it. She had to go through this testing to say, yes, I have faith, and I'm not going to waver because it's not happening. How many times do we have situations in our life and things happen and we go, oh, 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 I think he's disappeared. <laughs> I think he's gotten silent on me like he doesn't care. He says, I am not stopping my love for you. He's going to continue it. But somehow we get that feeling, right? He wants to know, are you going to hold on to believing in me? Mark 11 says something very similar. I'm going to start with verse uh, 23. No, I'm going to start with verse 22. And he says, Jesus said to them in reply, have faith in God. He says about this mountain, he says, if you say, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, does not doubt in his heart, 
it shall be done for him. Therefore I tell you, all that you ask for in prayer, believe that you will receive it, and it shall be yours. Of course, he goes on to say, don't forget to forgive people too. No. <laughs> Make sure you're not holding on to things that are blocking me from working. But he wants to do mighty works in us. So maybe like the Canaanite woman, we're going to be tested. Then, like the Canaanite woman, he wants to know, are you going to persevere? Are you going to hold on? Are you going to give up? Will you keep on going no matter how hard it seems to be? Will you keep believing in my love and keep on believing? Have you ever had those moments when maybe you even felt that humiliating word like the Lord is saying, well, I'm not going to answer you right now. <laughs> and he says, well, just give me a little bit. <laughs> He wants us to persevere in believing in him. And maybe even if we feel humiliated. So last night, I mean this morning as I was praying with this, I said, Lord, you've been putting me through this. <laughs> you've been doing this in me. You're trying to see if I'm going to have faith that you're going to give me a word. And I said, you seem so quiet I couldn't hear a thing. <laughs> and he says, yes, and what did you do? <laughs> I started to waver, Lord. Oh, forgive me, Lord. Sometimes we have to ask his forgiveness because we don't continue to hold on. This has been the first segment of Father Francis Frankovich teaching on Persevere, Don't Give Up on God. For an audio CD or video DVD of this complete teaching, we invite you to write to us. Our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Francis Frankovich continues with his teaching on Persevere, Don't Give Up on God. So many times people come to me and I just say, ah, uh, it's done, go on. <laughs> no, you have to do this, you have to do that. I said, I don't know, let's let the Lord work, huh? Sometimes we have it all said how God's going to work. And he says, look, I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> Will you trust me? I have a reading for you today from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 8, verses 18 to 22. Jesus says, now, or rather, now when Jesus saw great crowds around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. And a scribe came up and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of his disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Follow me and leave the dead to bury their own dead. See, there's a lot of people who are willing or think they're willing to follow the Lord Jesus. But many people, many of us, we place conditions on our following uh, of the Lord Jesus. You know, this first person said, Jesus, I'll follow you wherever you go. Assuming that Jesus was going to a great place. You know, a, you know Jesus would, would be an earthly king soon and, and he'd be able to reign with, with Jesus. And he'd understand that Jesus was going to the cross. And the other person says, I'll go with you, but first let me bury my father. And this is an imagery for let me, let me take care of worldly things first uh, before I go with you. And again, Jesus is saying, if you want to follow me, uh, you need to do that without any conditions. And again, there's, there's so many of us who, when we hear the Lord calling us in our life, we hesitate. You know, we're not willing to, to just do like the disciples did, drop their, net, their nets and follow the Lord Jesus. And I can give you an example. Like I've worked for a number of years uh, with, with young men who were discerning the priesthood, you know, discerning a call to the priesthood. And among these young men, there were some who obviously did have a call to the priestly life. And they would admit that themselves. They would say, yes, in the depths of my heart, I know the Lord is calling me to the priesthood. But so many of these, these men would have uh, concerns or hesitations and an unwillingness 
to simply follow the Lord, follow the call. And I came up with a list of seven excuses, you know, I've heard from young men who admit that they feel that the Lord is calling to the priesthood, but aren't willing to drop their nets and follow. Now, the first one, a common one, is uh, young men will say, I know the Lord's calling me to the priesthood, but I'm worried about my parents. Who will take care of my parents? Well, the obvious answer is God's going to take care of your parents. Like if God is calling you to be a priest, you need to trust that God will take care of everything else, including uh, your parents. Second excuse I've heard is, yes, I feel called to the priesthood, but there's my family business. You know, my dad's business, and I, I don't want, want to let my dad down and my brothers down and, and the family business and all that type of thing. And again, you need to ask yourself, where's your heart? You know, is your heart in this temporal business, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with business, but if the Lord is calling you to serve in His vineyard for the kingdom, you need to give that priority. And again, you need to ask yourself, where is my heart? Is it for the kingdom or is it for worldly things? Third excuse that's common is people will say, yes, I feel the Lord wants me to be a priest. He's calling me to the priesthood, but I need to finish my university degree first. And that might be valid. You know, a person, the Lord might be calling a person to, to finish his, his studies first. But again, sometimes people will, will put the Lord off. They'll, they'll say, wait, Lord, I know you're calling me to something, but I need to finish something first. And, you know, I always tell young men, you don't keep the king of kings waiting. If the Lord says, follow me now, you follow him. I joined the seminary after my first year of engineering studies. And a number of people were saying, it'd be wise for you to finish your engineering studies first, just in case, you know, the seminary doesn't work out, to have something to, back to fall on. And that's, that's wisdom. But if the Lord is saying, no, I want you to follow now, you need to listen to the Lord. Fourth excuse is, I'll hear people say, oh, I feel called to the priesthood, but I'm worried about being able to use my artistic creativity. I'm an artistic person and I like to, to use my creativity and I'm worried if I become a priest, I won't be able to use that. And again, the response is, is if you want to follow Jesus, you need to deny yourself. You need, to, you need to lose your life and you need to trust that somehow the Lord will use your gifts in an even greater way. You know, we can't, we can't um, put conditions on following the Lord. You know, Lord, I'll follow you if you let me use this particular gift. I'll follow you if you put me in this situation. And again, we need to trust the Lord. He will take better care of us than we can imagine. Another common excuse uh, for, for men discerning the priesthood is they'll say, well, my family doesn't understand this whole call to celibacy thing. You know, they don't, they don't understand the priesthood. They don't understand what I'm, what I'm discerning. And my response is don't expect them to understand. You know, what the Lord calls us to is radical. It's, it's something that worldly people, uh, you can't expect them to understand. And if we worry about what other people think, uh, you know, this is, this is going to prevent us from following the Lord wholeheartedly. We should worry about what God thinks and not what men think. A sixth excuse I've heard more than once is uh, a young man saying, I do feel called to the priesthood but I, I have my, my dogs, and I really like my dogs, and the seminary won't let me bring my dogs to the seminary. You're not allowed to have dogs at the seminary, and so I, 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 I can't join the seminary. Now, I'm not even going to respond to that one. The seventh, uh, the seventh excuse uh, I've heard is people will say, I feel called to the priesthood, but... I want to be close to my family. I'm willing to become a priest if I can be close to my family because I really love my family and I'm close to my family. And so that's my only concern, that I become a priest and I end up somewhere far from my family. Now, of course, love for your family, wanting to be close to your family, that's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that. But again, if the Lord says, leave everything and follow me, you know, father and mother, uh, brothers and sisters to follow me, you need to do that. Are we following Jesus or are we trying to get Jesus to follow us? Again, the call to follow Jesus, it's a radical call. 
and I gave examples of, of men being called to the priesthood, but we can look at, at, at anyone in life whom the Lord is calling to, 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 to a special mission, a special vocation. Well, if the Lord is calling you, don't give Him excuses. Don't put Him off. Don't tell Him to wait. Don't put conditions. You know, don't, don't ask Him to, to, to follow you under your uh, criteria. Again, when the disciples were called to follow the Lord Jesus, they dropped their nets. They left everything behind. They didn't know where they were going. They didn't know what they, what they were getting themselves into. But they trusted Jesus. They followed Him completely, wholeheartedly. Many of them followed Him uh, even to death. And again, this is, this is the ultimate uh, call the Lord is looking for us. A, a complete surrender to Him, a trust in Him that if we follow Him, He will care for us. And so that's my challenge to you. Is the Lord calling you to follow Him? If He is, drop your nets and follow. We're so blessed to have a number of new viewers who have written in to us at Food for Life. Some have been watching Food for Life for years and really felt it was time that God was just leading them to support the ministry financially. And I just want to extend a heartfelt note of thanks to each and every new viewer and of course to all our viewers who support us. Food for Life is only made possible through the collective efforts of many people just like you. It's through your prayers and financial gifts that we can continue. And I just want to thank you for standing with us. If Food for Life has been a blessing to you, we encourage you to tell a friend about Food for Life. Perhaps you can have a friend over and they can watch Food for Life with you. The best form of advertising is word of mouth. And also, in the Great Commission, we're called to share the good news. And one of the ways we do this is through telling people about Catholic programs like Food for Life so that they can hear the gospel firsthand. Again, if Food for Life has been a blessing or help, we hope you'll consider telling a friend or perhaps lending your support, your prayers, and your financial gifts. We'd like to hear from you. We would like to thank you for your financial support of the Food for Life television ministry. Food for Life is funded only by viewers like yourself. We have no commercial sponsors. Your tax-deductible donations help pay for production of the program, pay the television station for the time that the program is on the air, and pay for the mailing of our monthly newsletter. Thank you again for your support of this Catholic television ministry. For an audio CD or video DVD of today's ministry, we invite you to write to us. When you write, mention the program number 1408 and today's topic, Father Francis Frankovich on Persevere, Don't Give Up on God. Food for Life is a non-profit Catholic charity funded only by donations from viewers. If every viewer gave a loony or a toony each week, all expenses would be met. If you have never donated before, we ask that you make your check payable to Food for Life, and our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. You may now make your donation online. Just go to our website at www.foodforlifetvministry.org and follow the link. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Francis Frankovich continues with his teaching on Persevere, Don't Give Up on God. So many times people come to me and I just say, ah, it's done, go on. <laughs> no, you have to do this, you have to do that. I said, I don't know, let's let the Lord work, huh? Sometimes we have it all said how God's gonna work and he says, look, I know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Will you trust me? This has been the first segment of Father Francis Frankovich teaching on Persevere, Don't Give Up on God. For an audio CD or video DVD of this complete teaching, we invite you to write to us. Our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8.